Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back again to online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture, the synergy. So far we have discussed various uh, type of structure, their advantages, their application, uh, even the materials that we use for that. But now onwards we will be focusing on something uh, that we always uh, love to see that the high rise or tall building structures. At the beginning of this course uh, I mentioned that uh, nowadays, we are looking for the vertical expansion of the city that means making skyscraper and definitely the engineering, uh, the application, the different kind of structure that we require to make those uh, skyscraper is definitely something of our interest. Many a times we just uh, admire, we just you know appreciate the buildings, but at the same time it is always better to know some fundamentals different type of uh, functions, different type of services that is required. But in this course as because it is focused on the structural form and architecture, we will focus on the structural system only. But along with that for high rise building services is one of the major option. So, in uh, upcoming uh, few lectures, we will be focusing on high rise building. This is lecture number 36. Uh, in this lecture preliminary, we will discuss the fundamentals of tall buildings and the evolution of structures, different restriction of uh, structural system, their limitation up to certain height and then how we can improve the structure and some life examples as well. After learning this particular lecture, we will move forward different components of the high rise structure and we will again do some uh, case studies for mega structure. So, let us get start this lecture on evolution of high rise structural system. At the beginning of this presentation, if you uh, look this particular slide uh, and if I ask you the name of the building, I think all of you can give me the right answer. Yes, it is uh, Burj Khalifa uh, in Saudi Arabia and you can see that uh, uh, picture in this how beautiful it is even it is like uh, above the cloud. So, it is always a try for the human to you know make something really great really very tall and that is the reason day by day whenever we say the tallest structure in the world and each year maybe uh, each day that record is broken by some someone or other. So, this is considered to be the tallest, but now also we got uh, get another uh, kingdom tower which is even uh, you know taller than this building and there are many in the pipeline. If you go through uh, the website, you will get the list that some buildings are under construction especially in the uh, Dubai, Saudi Arabia, in China, in Japan uh, the tall structure and as uh, uh, if we consider in India. We are also nowadays uh, going for this high rise building and we have uh, some high rise building in Mumbai and even now uh, the 42 in Kolkata and there are many in pipeline even in uh, your Gurgaon and Noida. So, these are the area uh, like there are project in the pipeline. So, anyway uh, we just uh, go through the presentation and we will try to understand the basis and different structural evolution over the period of high rise building. Now, high rise uh, is a multi story building and uh, to be honest there is no particular definition of high rise building or skyscraper in that sense and it varies uh, place to place. Sometimes even a uh, uh, building more than 4 stories considered to be multi story building and even 10 story we can say this is high rise even sometimes 50 story even do not consider as high rise building. So, 
depending on the location, depending on the context and the proportion of the surrounding buildings uh, that will vary. Now, as I said that definition varies, but for high rise structure uh, which is a common phenomena that tall enough to require the use of system of mechanical elevator. So, that means when you can reach a building uh, height by like stair or something is uh, maybe not the high rise category, but when it is high rise we have to have very efficient elevator or ex, uh, what we call lift. Uh, mechanical lift uh, for the easy evacuation. But the, the moment you increase the height of the building, remember one thing, we have to take care of the evacuation of the inhabitants. So, for that we need some mechanical system as well. And also this is uh, um, um, broadly known as tall buildings and also skyscraper. Here the example is the same and the previous one. Now, this is uh, the height. So, you can see the proportion of this building compared to the surrounding building. So, definitely it is much, much taller than the other buildings around it. So, this is uh, one of the skyscraper. Now, all of a sudden we, why we want to build this skyscraper or high rise building? Uh, as I mentioned that uh, now we should go for vertical expansion as because the habitable land, uh, there is some scarcity due to you know rapid urbanization, growth in population, uh, we need to expand vertically. So, scarcity of land uh, that in intensify the need of high rise building. Then again when we have the technology and day to day we update it and we have the technology to go uh, vertically, so why not to apply that. So, advancement of technology also contributes to decide upon like to upcoming structure, the high rise structure. Then increasing demand for business and residential space. This is again very important and it is related to the first point that scarcity of land. Now uh, in planning process, we go for uh, mixed uh, land use development where like both residential, it is not uh, no more horizontal expansion, it is basically the residential tower and the same tower will have the facility partially of the business or commercial activity. As because the demand increases day by day, there is also a need to go vertically. Coming to the next point, this is the economic growth uh, and if you see the pattern that uh, the countries they are who are actually having good economy, they are making this building because the making this building starting from is planning to the execution and the uh, you know the system that is required to maintain it uh, really uh, having some relation with the economy of the region. And so as true like uh, for the case of Dubai or even in China, uh, they are uh, making this kind of high rise building in recent times. Even we all can recall uh, the World Trade Center previously, uh, even now the new one, the one World Trade Center in USA. So, uh, this is another example of high rise, I will come to that as well in some of the uh, you know I will show you as uh, an example. Now, innovation in structural system, yes this innovation is must required. The technology where uh, helped us to you know go with the process, construction process, but at the same time the innovation in structural system, how we improve it. As we started with the lecture earlier, like we just started with the load bearing uh, structure uh, only limited to one or two floors and then is a simple your wall and the slab structure. And then in recent times uh, later in the later stage of this uh, lecture series, uh, we have also seen that uh, the folded place structure or membrane structure or you can uh, say sales structure which actually uh, removed uh, the boundary of you know uh, having so closely placed column one after another. So, we can have um, columnless space if we adequately use it. And now this is nothing but the advancement of that uh, structural system with new innovation and it is upgrading day by day uh, with uh, the input of the engineers, architects and who are uh, working in this field. And that also has a relation with the improvement of the materials because in order to go high, in order to resist again the loads, definitely we need the material uh, which can uh, 
uh, capable to resist and make the structure safe and stable. Now, desire for aesthetics in urban settings, why uh, this is something where we think of uh, urban designer point of view, where we will have a skyline of uh, a city. So, if you see the skyline of New York, so all high rise structure is making some you know uh, image of the city. So, this is another important thing that to you know show the prosperity of the city or uh, the whatever the advancement in the city that we can depict through that. Then the concept of city skyline as I already mentioned, cultural significance and prestige, uh, definitely a city will have such building which will be iconic, world recognized, definitely one should uh, really proud of. So, this is one of the reason we can, uh, if the economy support, the if the technology support and every other criteria uh, that being fulfilled. Then human aspiration to build higher, this is always uh, people minds that we should go high and something you know uh, sky is the limit. So, this is something where uh, people they always uh, look for building high rise. Now, these are some from the history like it is not uh, the new concept that we think of. Uh, nowadays, we are looking for this option as a need because of vertical expansion, we have a scarcity uh, like scarcity of land, but earlier uh, what like the supremacy or the prestige of the king, uh, they also mean monumental structure. Uh, but when we call it high rise building, that means that should be habitable like it not a very uh, you know high sculpture or any monumental structure in that sense. But anyway in this regard if we consider the height of the structure, so definitely we have uh, examples here. So, this is one summary where you can see different churches, uh, then we have the Pisa, we have Colosseum, even the pyramid, uh, the huge structure. So, coming to that uh, quickly we uh, just go through these images where uh, the high rise in history. So, this is uh, the pyramid you can gauge the height of the structure that was made that time with the technology available to them. Even this is another example from Egypt. So, normally uh, if you go through the Egyptian uh, architecture and all you find such uh, monumental structure with uh, the stone and all. So, in this case this is a uh, temple. So, here also you can get the scale, this is also considered to be uh, high rise. And then also it is the Lincoln Cathedral uh, in United Kingdom. So, here also you can see the height of the building. So, uh, we at that time itself like uh, they made it so that this can be viewed from a long distance and this will be iconic building of the city to make the image of the city. Now, this is very common uh, uh, you know example the minar or the tower. So, this is Kutub Minar in, uh, in India. So, here you can uh, get this high rise concept as well. Coming to a temple, this is Sun Temple in India again from Orissa. So, here you can get the height of the building. This is again a high rise structure and there are plenty if you see that all South Indian temples and all. So, they have a, a gigantic scale compared to the human scale and this structure was made long back. Continuing to uh, uh, that uh, history now, if we just uh, go little past. Uh, to the little past. So, we can get this home insurance building at Chicago where it was considered to be you know uh, one of the first uh, high rise building made uh, for you know habitation. So, all the floors being used. So, as true for uh, uh, old earth building at New York. So, here also uh, you can see the building this is considered to be high rise. Now, coming to uh, the history of the high rise here you can see like the home insurance building as I mentioned that is considered to be uh, your first uh, uh, like your high rise building and now we move to the recent time where the completed among the com completed building we have Burj Khalifa uh, as uh, the tallest and very soon the kingdom tower in Jade will be uh, you know breaking the record of this in terms of height. And uh, just to be mentioned that this kind of uh, 
you know decision to take whether to um, you know take that example or take that building or mark that uh, building as tall structure and all. So, there is a council that is council on tall buildings and urban habitat. So, they uh, keep on updating the information about uh, all the completing or ongoing project or the proposed project of the building based on their category. Uh, so, compared to the height of the other buildings definitely the home insurance building was not that great, but that also included in this and that is in 1885 and now we are in age of uh, already 2019-2020. So, here the many changes you have seen. So, it includes the Petronas Tower, it also includes the Taipei in Taiwan and then there are world, one vaulted center. Uh, that is also being there where the twin tower was there, uh, but unfortunately uh, that was uh, now um, that is rebuilt and then even the new structure is in uh, the picture uh, in, in the list of uh, you know uh, world tallest building. So, considering that the tallest 20 in, uh, 2020 that is the overall picture if you see that uh, as I mentioned the kingdom tower is uh, ranked first and then the Burj Khalifa and accordingly if you go through also it includes the Makkah Royal Clock Tower, also it includes uh, your uh, one vaulted center in New York City and then you have uh, Taipei. So, like that you have uh, many, so here you can get uh, the example of your uh, um, uh, Shanghai Tower, also you can go for your signature tower. So, if you browse through this particular link, uh, the building listed uh, in council of on tall buildings and urban habitats, you will get more such information about the tallest building. Now, uh, with that the modern few buildings, here you can get the Shanghai Tower in China, then one world trade center uh, in US, then you can get this Burj Khalifa and also the kingdom tower. So, these are very uh, you know recent development and high rise um, structure the skyscraper in the picture. Now, this is a similar thing where uh, another pictorial example where the kingdom tower and how like we can compare the other structure as well. So, uh, like day by day it is breaking the record like uh, each say within uh, 5 years interval we get a new list. Uh, each time or someone is breaking someone's record or not. So, this is very uh, ongoing and uh, keep on upgrading about the height. Now, coming to the challenges for the high rise which is very important for us, uh, the first challenge is about the mobility, mobility in terms of vertical movement and for that uh, when uh, the OTs uh, invented the mechanical leap till that particular point uh, like it was a really a challenge to go really vertical uh, and that required some energy to bring all the lift up the material as well. It is not only the movement of the people, but when you build it, so it also requires some kind of system. So, for high rise this is very important and also we should think of the evacuation like uh, for that you have to uh, think of high level services in terms of lift, high, high speed lift. So, that uh, within a given time of evacuation whatever the standard time within that the people uh, for, uh, from inside they can come outside. Then the materials is very important like uh, definitely steel, uh, concrete. So, they are uh, being used for the high rise structure and now it is also composite material uh, and a new uh, research on different building materials is going on. So, uh, maybe in future we will get some uh, even better uh, material for the high rise structure. Then the construction method is again uh, challenging the speed of the construction, the tools and techniques to be used for the construction for the high rise uh, that need to be uh, very much. Uh, you know up to date because at the time of construction at the upper level uh, the problem that you can face due to wind uh, in an area and as we discussed earlier that with the increase in height so wind speed also uh, you know 
affecting more. So, with that how you make your construction, how you create all this structure uh, in a proper manner is definitely a challenge how that to be dealt with. So, this is another challenge for high rise. Then the heating and ventilation at that height we cannot uh, think of uh, natural ventilation or maybe the cross flow. So, we have to think of uh, the heating and ventilation with the coated glass or maybe double glass as and then how we can protect from the protect the building from the lateral wind load. So, that need to be thought of. Then the lateral load, uh, the aerodynamics and as well as the load of your earthquake that is your seismic load. So, that are two major concerns for the high rise building, because when the building height is low then com, uh, like your uh, effect on wind uh, reduced and uh, we only consider the axial load, the dead load, live load acting on a building and that can be tackled with your uh, typical frame structure or maybe RCC structure, but when the in, uh, we increase the height, the shape and size uh, orientation that will matter a lot. And definitely when the building is too high that lateral sway will be even more. So, this is very important to know and these are the challenges and uh, the engineers they always take care of these challenges, they uh, simulate, uh, virtually they simulate the building and they performed under different tunnel test, different seismic plate test and then finally, they confirm the structural design. So, that your structure will uh, be in uh, you know intact in real scenario as well. Coming to the loads acting on this, these are similar loads that we have discussed earlier, but here also with the context two uh, important uh, parameters which will be very much critical for high rise building, one is your seismic load and other is your wind load. So, normally if we again classify the load distribution, so one load will be your vertical load which is axial load can be taken care of the column and other thing and connecting beam and other is your lateral load either with the wind or maybe the ground motion for uh, like earthquake. So, the different wave being created during the earthquake, certain earthquake and then that will create a challenge. Now, uh, with that in this picture, if you can see that how uh, this building, two buildings they are actually sway to each other. You can see that I have fixed uh, that line and then how it is moving from each other. So, whenever there is uh, earthquake occurs at uh, the uh, hypocenter and then gradually it will come up at the epicenter and then how wave being uh, spread out uh, depending on the intensity then there will be motion uh, different uh, plate motion and for that the building can fall due to uh, the liquidation liquefaction or maybe it is just uplift or it may have a serious damage and damping. So, uh, we have seen that uh, while, while we discussed about the structure uh, like for earthquake prone area in that lecture we have seen that how things uh, happen in that category. So, for high rise it will be more vulnerable because of uh, the height. So, uh, definitely the movement at the ground and movement at the top this uh, even a fraction of second these are different and that will create some kind of you know. Uh, you know instability to the structure and if it is not properly uh, maintained or it is not properly tackled with a different structural system. So, it will collapse. So, this is very vital and there are different way of uh, doing it earthquake resistance that we have already discussed. Now, coming to the wind uh, as I mentioned that when you increase the height more wind pressure will act on the building and you will have the sway. So, here you can see that building that the deflection uh, from the it is a neutral axis that how it deflects and also it depends on the form. The moment you have a very much you know um, circular form or maybe some aerodynamic form. So, uh, wind can easily pass through. So, uh, the wind pressure that the negative pressure of the drag effect not being created that much in this case, but in case of uh, square building it is more and even if your building is having reg, uh, irregular shape. So, it will be more vulnerable and that is why uh, if you see that overall like all the high rise building will take a very 
basic shape very you know regular shape either in terms of your you know sample triangular shape or circular or maybe uh, at the edge they just make a round shape so that this can be easily taken care of. So, like that uh, uh, if I just consider this is my building high rise building. So, uh, in order to depict so I just fix it like this. So, for the wind uh, when uh, this particular end is basically acting like a cantilever uh, to the base. So, it will move uh, much and where your base to the height ratio is too much. So, it will consider to be the tall building and the effect on the top portion of the building is high. So, for that we definitely need to uh, make some structure which will resist again this kind of lateral load. Coming to the components is uh, same thing like uh, you have column then beam, column is uh, responsible for taking the axial load acting uh, vertically that we have seen and the beam is basically uh, taking the load of uh, it is having dual purpose. Uh, this beam first uh, which transfer the load of the float to the column and also it will take the load of the lateral. So, wind load or something so that will taken care of and this junction is very critical for the seismic activity if properly not done then um, there will be disaster. The shear wall is basically uh, the wall uh, similar to a cantilever. Uh, to the base. So, if you have uh, this plane and then you just vertically make uh, this particular wall, uh, shear wall. So, this will act as a extended column or something uh, of similar which will resist the lateral load. So, for high, uh, so for high rise building, we use this shear wall to have more shear resistance or lateral for the lateral force. So, uh, then we will discuss that when we discuss the different components in next lecture. Then bracing we have discussed uh, many a times when you have a frame in order to give more steepness or rigidity we just uh, connect it with a diagonal start uh, or member which is called bracing. So, that can be irregular, that can be symmetrical, that can be both way and the core is another important uh, component of that. So, where your building uh, will have uh, a service, all the service and probably we can make uh, my structure uh, like main structural element, uh, the main structural columns, heavy columns are put together very close to each other and we make the service core like this. So, it can be made of uh, your shear wall as well which will essentially uh, anchor uh, this particular floor. This is a, a typical plan of a high rise building where the outer portion may have some uh, column, but uh, the main load being uh, carried out uh, by this particular core. So, vertically if you see that uh, your building is having multiple floor and they are connected with the core. So, uh, again we will discuss uh, this core in uh, next lecture where different kind of cores and their material and again the steel reinforced concrete uh, are the materials we can also combine them to uh, go for different composition with the uh, steel truss and the concrete frame or something like that. Coming to the evolution of the structure, so broadly it has been classified as per the council on tall buildings and urban habitat, it is being divided in four types. One is the shear frames, next is your interacting system where your uh, truss, uh, steel truss is uh, interacting with the concrete frame. So, both are having different advantages whether we know that truss will have uh, because of this you know triangular membership this will have better steepness and can uh, con like distribute the load and then the frame will have some rigidity where can uh, take uh, you know your axial loads that can be combined. Then uh, for uh, more uh, height, uh, if you increase 
height then we should go for type 3 that is partial tubular system where uh, basically uh, you use this external portion external perimeter uh, and place your column so close to each other so that will form a tube. So, uh, that will give a basically a thickness to the outer periphery and we make it. So, sometimes we may have uh, this tube inside that uh, partial tubular and then we can go for um, you know fully tubular where you can make tube uh, in inside tube. So, with this four category also we have a different way of classifying it. So, here you can see that how things will look like uh, pictorially. Uh, in this pictorial representation, you can see that uh, rigid frame is basically column beam layout and then when uh, it will be uh, having shear stress, so in with the frames you just uh, you know partially make those frame uh, with the you know truss, you include the truss so that, that will become your interacting system in type 2. So, with your frame you just uh, include the shear truss into that. So, here also framing with the shear band and out triggers, so this we will discuss in detail. Then we can go with uh, your partial tube where you can see that uh, this uh, with the shear wall that uh, this portion is being made as a tubular section and then uh, we can go for that uh, perfect tubular system and also we can go with the bracing and then we can actually make some combination and if you see that uh, with the structure complexity also you can able to increase the height of the building. For high rise building we can go and here it is a typical floor. Uh, that been taken. So, with uh, your uh, normal frame structure you can go up to 8 to 10 story whereas, we if we apply this uh, your uh, tube structure we can go up to 110 and even more. Uh, so, all the story that uh, now you see the Butch Khalifa and all that is made of barnil tube we will discuss uh, in detail as well. Now, again the cl classification uh, is there the interior structure and exterior structure. So, based on that if we cluster them. So, a system where uh, the major part of the lateral load resisting is uh, actually located within the interior of the building means if we have the building and it is located at the interior. So, this is called interior structure where uh, like this is basically uh, the interior structure where exterior structure that your moment like lateral load resisting component are placed at the periphery. So, that will become your exterior structure. So, uh, here uh, briefly like if you see that these are different type of uh, interior structure and then these are uh, your exterior structure. We will not go into detail in this part because we will have a like discussion separately for interior structure and exterior structure, then we will discuss one of this category. So, again if we go for exterior structure, we will able to increase the height of the building. Whenever we uh, think of a very tall building uh, 150 story or 200, we should go for exterior structure uh, and then whenever it is within the limit, we can go with the interior structure. So, the summary is basically already uh, I have discussed in detail that from past to present that how the you know uh, people's aspiration to build high is being successful and it is continuing and then there are different example broadly here we summarize with two type of uh, structure one is your interior structure and then we have your exterior structure. Okay, and we will be focusing on that. So, next uh, uh, lecture, the lex next lecture will be on this. So, this is lecture number uh, your 36. So, this will be lecture number 37 and it will be discussed on lecture number 38. So, with that I uh, conclude here and uh, this is the source that you can get many example. This is specially uh, a book on designing tall building and it has a relation with the architecture. So, please go through this book if it is uh, available to your library or I will try to give some kind of more notes as att attachment uh, in the forum and 
thank you all for you know taking part in this course. Uh, we will be meeting in the next lecture that is your high rise structural component part 1 and we will be dis discussing on the interior structure of high, uh, high rise structural system. Thank you.